particularly on the NES, a lot of them struggle to stand out. And so they do little stuff like throw a, an adventure game in there, like with Pinball Quest, which we talked about earlier this year, or their pixel for pixel recreations of a classic pinball table, like Pinbot, or they actually pinned by high speed. There were a few that were themed after well-known tables, right? Well, today's game tries to throw some multiplayer action in there. Um, and it's actually a port of a Namco title that didn't get that Namco didn't bring over to the States. Big surprise, Namco didn't have an NES license until almost the end of the Nintendo the NES life cycle. Nintendo was like, hey, you can bring your own games over here, you know. But anyway, um, this game was originally called Family uh, Family Pinball. Yeah. Um, and it was released here in the US somewhere in 1990. It tries, but there's some weird stuff going on here. We're going to get into it right quick. Today, we're going to take a quick look at Rock and Ball. Now, Rock and Ball has a number of different modes, right? And um, the standard table is like up to four players and the other modes are two player they're versus modes you can play them against the computer but you know you can also play against a person trying to make a second person play this with you though you might lose a friend the ideas are are good the thoughts behind some of this stuff are solid the execution wasn't really that good. And that seems like a common theme and a common thread throughout a lot of these pinball games. Actually, a lot of the games in general that we've talked about this year. A lot of good ideas, a lot of poor execution. This one, the execution isn't poor. It's a well-executed video game. It's just... Who wants to play something that jarring? Like some of the versus tables, the where your players' flippers lie and where the where your opponents' flippers lie, they randomly switch. They randomly rotate. Who wants to do that to themselves? This game is jarring in spots. Um, there's a weird like thing that's supposed to be like bingo or not. It's called a nine ball. And it's really weird. Um, it's kind of like pachinko almost. I don't know. It, it's weird. Um, then there's like a, a table that's set up like hockey. So there's like, two, you got your flippers and they move around. Then you got a goalie on each end. And that's, that's kind of disorienting. Because again, your goal's rotate every now and then just out of nowhere um this game got a lot going on and i'm not a big fan of a lot of it the standard table's cool this other stuff nah i'm okay i don't need it and it's a shame because again ideas are there and it's not a poorly crafted video game. It's just a very weird one. And I don't know if I need that in my life. In this stage of my life, mm -mm, 
I don't need weird NES, weird experimental pinball games on my NES. You probably could have got this over on me in the 90s. Not in 2022. Now, let's say you want a copy of Rock and Ball, right? About $10. $10 is a good, a good average. If you're into video pinball, this would be a win for you. This would be right up your alley. You'll like it. I promise. Otherwise, if you desperately need a video pinball game, pinbots right there. Um, high speeds right there. If you want something different, Pinball Quest is right there. Those are all better representations of just straight up pinball than rock and ball, sadly. But this has been the 8-Bit Animal. I'll catch you beautiful people tomorrow. Tomorrow. Hey, look, it's the other submarine game everybody knows. And this one even got Sean Connery in it. What could go wrong?